through and all. Um, Coach Des has asked me to um, do a presentation about um, multi-factor training, um, which is the foundation or the fundamental part of maximal training. Um, is it an old tradition or a new phenomenon? So I'm going to share a PowerPoint that I've, uh, that I've prepared and hopefully that will shed some light on are we dealing with something brand new or are we dealing with something that has been in existence for some time already? So when we look at multi-factor training, we, we obviously use the, the illustration of, of maximal training where we have the football brain, we have the technical training, we have the tactical training, and the conditioning that impacts on the football brain. Is that a new concept that maximal training has, is, 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 is as a methodology or is it an old tradition that had just been ignored? Our old conventional factor by factor concept of training, which is um, we do the fitness training first and then we do the technique, then tactical training, and then eventually we include the mental factor. So in the modern training for high performance, we include those four aspects, the technique, tactics, physical conditioning, and game psychology, or the mental factor. And, and maximal training includes all of those, the football brain, the philosophy, added to the four concepts, we, we add the biocultural traits, the player identities, football philosophy, objectives, content, variables, etc. Just to give a brief or an overview of maximal training, a timeline of influence, I call it. Um, that is when Professor Te Dumitru um, came to Africa. We see that he started in the 1980 with Zambia. He then moved on to Kaiser Chiefs in 1985. And then a significant move in 1992, the Chibuku Youth Center in Soweto. That leading up to 1994 at the School of Excellence. And then an historical event in 1995, the first SAFA coaching certification at the School of Excellence. Prior to that, no coaching certification or formal coaching education existed in South African football. This was the first conducted by Professor Te Dimitro. I think I have a photo of the participants at that historic coaching certification that happened at the School of Excellence. Then a Prof went on to Mamelodi Sundowns in 1987, a brief time at Orlando Pirates in 99, back to Mamelodi Sundowns in 2001, a move back to Kaiser Chiefs in 2003, and then eventually, 2009, the Mamelodi Sundowns Paktawana program that lasted for 18 months. And in between all of these historical events, regarding maximal training and our Professor Ted Dumitro, there's obviously been coaching development. Beyond 2009, I think that is where, where Professor went extensively on developing coaches across South Africa. I was fortunate with some colleagues and family of mine to host coach um, Prof in 2013. At the end of 2013, we're approximately 45 coaches in, South Af uh, in Cape Town. And then we also had some of the coaches um, from Joburg um, in our group. Uh, Cabello Mokwena was with us. Um, was all, we also had um, from Sean, Coach Sean from, from currently at, at, at Sundowns. Um, and that legacy continues. 
So that has been for me the timeline of maximal training. And our next slide shows us the conventional factor by factor concept of the old traditional way. Um, in the left hand corner I have in the slide, you have a line of boys taking turns one at a time, about 10 and more than 10 of them. Uh, waiting their turn to do a dribbling through a straight line. Next to it, we have shuttle runs, the very popular shuttle run. And then on the right hand side of the, of the, of the slide, we have um, a passing drill, very static passing drill. Two lines formed, a back and forth, a back and forth passing. Um, then we also have at the bottom of the, the, the slide, we have the part leg running where there's jogging, there's cruising, there's a sprint, there's a walk around the pitch. So that is used in traditional methods of coaching to get a player um, his athletic fitness up. On the right hand side of the slide, we also have a, 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 a passing drill. Um, four players on each side uh, forming a, a type, type of a, a diamond shape um, and that would go on and in another exercise would be a something similar um, if you have a squad of between 16 to 20 players and then at the bottom of this the slide we have the soccer drills where everything there's ladders there's hurdles but everything happens in a straight line in, 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 in terms of a circuit format um, there's no uh, there's no goalpost, there's no opposition, there's nothing in the in the shape and forms that's in the, the the activity that replicates what actually happens in a match. Everything is in a straight line. You'll see the cones it's straight lines. You'll see the 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 hurdles in two straight lines, and then it's followed by those um, the poles that gets laid down, and then there's maybe um, uh, the ladders and then the flat saucer cones where there's also a dribbling. So th th these are examples of what we see today um, in the in the factor to factor still very very popular. Um, then we move on to our multi-factor maximized training. These are some some pictures of clinics that we've been doing in in, in, in Cape Town and in the Overberg area, the bottom corner. Um, we have with um, Itemba Sporting Academy in, in Hermanas. Um, there we have Coach Ernest Kordani. Um, and in the, in the top three photos, that was a, 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 a coaching clinic that we conducted for over 120 boys and girls between the ages of 7 to 14 years old and using the maximal training multi-factor um, activities and in the bottom left hand corner this is a facility at, at the school that I teach at at Tafelberg where I'm using the multi-factor circuit of hurdles, higher cones, slalom poles where players maneuver to activate the brain at the beginning of a, of a training session um, just to prepare them for what is going to happen. These are just examples that I want to make a comparison to what is happening currently. These are also images taken from presentations and from um, the Maximal Training uh, Volume 3 um, publication that, that, that we have amongst our, our, our coaches. And you will see that all of these, um, these illustrations are very dynamic. It doesn't happen statically. It moves across. A, a, an area and you will always see that there's always a goal post and a goal scoring opportunity or a goal scoring activity at the end of the activity. You'll see that there's jumping, there's heading, there's dribbling, there's changing of direction, there's a challenge on the right hand side where I'm pointing the cursor um, where there's a 1v1 and a 2v1 challenging there. There's um, a small sided circuit, 1v1 and one plus one and then a, a small sided game and then then we have the multi-factor in the top right hand corner the multi-factor circuit where a player or a few players are dribbling the ball 
um, moving it through the obstacles. It can be slalom poles. It can be dummies. It can be various things that you can place ahead of it, a, a, a group of players. And then it ends in a goal-scoring opportunity with a goalkeeper having to defend the goal. And moving on to what is happen happening currently, and we can see the similarities, almost identical similarities to what Professor Ted Dumitro has introduced way back in 1992 at the Chibuku uh, Youth Center in Soweto. Um, here you'll see the harnesses, the resistance harness, the, the, this, this slide, the first slide in global elite coaching content is of uh, boss um, Bayern Munich, both um, under Pep Guardiola and also under the current coach, uh, Hansi Flick. You'll see the slalom poles, you'll see the, the different obstacles, how players move through it and ending in a goal scoring opportunity, the resistance bands, um, and, and so forth. That is at Bayern Munich. Moving on to our next one, we're at, at, at the famous Barcelona, very similar, if not identical um, activities, multi-factor, using the, the, the resistance bands, the harnesses at the bottom where we see uh, Messi and Suarez doing heading exercises with the resistance bands. We see Messi on the left-hand side going through the, the dummies. Um, we see two players, um, uh, Moussa Dembele and the other defender going through the slalom poles, etc. And in the middle, there's, there's obviously the small-sided games, the rondos that, that, that Barcelona is very famous for. And we move on to Manchester City. Currently, under Pep Guardiola, you'll see the dummies, you'll see the, the slalom poles um, at random uh, distances from one another. You see the, the, the activity, the intensity, and the fun that players have, the small-sided games. Um, and it is really rare that you will find them playing 11 versus 11 at any particular training session. Here you have currently, and I've chosen these teams currently because they are the trendsetters in innovative coaching methodologies and, and, and coaching, coaching activities. You'll see it even at Liverpool nowadays. This wasn't a, 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 a practice um, prior to Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. The, I, so this is also now, so my question is, is this a new phenomenon or is it an old tradition that we have been very privileged to, to, to be exposed to, especially our older coaches, our more experienced coaches, um, Coach Greg Mashilo, um, Coach Zippo, Coach Sudes and the other guys that, that used to, to, to accompany um, Professor Ted at, um, at, at, at all these programs, um, at the School of Excellence. There was, there was um, um, Kevin Johnson, there was uh, Farouk uh, Khan. Um, along the history, and I, and, I, and I call that the timeline of maximal training, is a timeline of multi-factor training in Africa. Before it was even a practice in Europe. I think Europe, under Klopp, under a Pep, and under the other innovative coaches, Bielsa, perhaps Bielsa has introduced this way back in, 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 in South America and, and perhaps in, at Atletico Bilbao when he was the coach there. Um, so the discussion would, would end and, and begin with, with coaches making their contribution is that I firmly believe that it is an old tradition introduced into African football by our Professor Ted Dimitro way back in 1992, if not first at Kaiser Chiefs in 1985 or even further back in Zambia in 1980. I just wanted to share the, the following with coaches before I end off and open the floor for discussion. Skills acquisition stages. Um, Number one, we would have the three different stages um, of the cognitive stage where there's understanding and learning. So here you introduce a certain skill or technique. 
So the player needs to understand what is required of them and we want to introduce this at a very young age. We want to introduce multi-factor training at a very young age so that players can benefit after 10 to 12 years of exposure. And then there's the learning so we, they understand and they learn how to execute technique. And then the second stage of skills acquisition would be the associative stage where we refine and we practice a particular skill and technique. So now we introduce when it is required to execute it and how it needs to be executed. So you have the skill and technique now. Now, when do I use, how I use it, what is the appropriate skill and technique to use in a particular scenario. And then finally, the autonomous stage where whatever is done by the player is automatic because the two stages prior to that, the cognitive and associative stage, have been completed um, and the player has now moved on to the ages of between 17 um, to adulthood where everything now happens automatically. So those are the skills acquisition stages that we need to, to, to respect and try to implement and try to to always be aware of it when we coach our younger players, even to our senior and more developed elite players. I just want to make a final comparison between what is traditional training or linear training or linear learning, where the training is very much coach-centered, it is repetitive, it breaks down the training into fitness, technical training, tactical training, and the mental factor gets included afterwards. So there's a block practice approach of motor learning. So every skill is, 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 is repeated until it is mastered. The, there's the coaching the same way to all the participants. So there's a one size fits all. The same technique training is done with a very uh, uh, under eight player, which is done with the under 16 player. So the cognitive stage, it's almost like players remain in that cognitive stage where there's understanding and learning, understanding and learning. There's no thought of progressing the session to meet the demands of each player in a game situation. There's no regard that players learn and development develop in a different format. Le uh, players and people learn in different ways. Some of us are kinesthetic learners, some of us are visual learners, some of us are audio learners. So we learn through different cues. Some of us can hear something and they can do it. Some of us must see a demonstration of it. Some of us must feel what is happening. They must be engaged. So we need to be able to determine what type of players do we have and their model of learning that they use to acquire knowledge. Each participant is unable to develop as much as they should because of the, the method of learning, that it's repetitive. They are not required to problem solve because everything is static, everything is very rehearsed. It's in a rigid format where there's a straight line. Each one asks, waits for his turn. Uh, the, the drill is completed, then another takes the drill. There's no active participation of more than one or two players. So that is our traditional or our linear training. And to end off, I feel that multi-factor maximized training, um, according to maximal training of Professor Ted Dimitro, it represents differentiate, differential training or non-linear training. Here, the training is football specific and it simulates the game action. The, it's player-centered, and it's age-appropriate activities. There's no one-size-fits-all, so the complexity is always increased as the player gets older or as he masters, he or she masters the skill and the technique. There's a stimulation of the football brain, so we all of these things get involved, and then we develop a football intelligence. Players need to make decisions. Nothing in, is in isolation again. So no activities in straight lines. I know I've seen a lot of coaches doing maximum training. 
but then we do find there's a straight line of slalom pole, there's a straight line of flat saucer cone, and there's a static line drill. Players stand still, they're waiting for the one to complete his turn, and then they will go. Players, the moment the training session starts, players, all the players need to be active. There should be no player waiting for his turn to complete an activity. There should be a continuous flow in what they do. There's no laps around the field while the coach is setting up his, his, his session. Um, all the activities must be with the ball. Because in isolation training, there's activities happen. The bulk of the training session is without the ball. Um, techniques, tactics, conditioning, game psychology, in multi-factor training or maximized training is an integrated whole relating to the football brain. So the player needs to make decisions about everything that involves the game. We also consider the cultures, the variables of the opponent, the field conditions, the weather conditions, um, the morale of a player, the, the, the match official, all of those things are included. And then there's also the introduction through very football specific aerobic and anaerobic training. There's an introduction of very safe plyometric and resistance training from young ages. And then obviously the complexity and um, the degree of, of, of dif difficulty gets in, uh, increased as they grow older. And then our small sided games, which is very match specific for the players where they include all of the skills and techniques that they um, acquired through the different stages of skills acquisition, the cognitive, the associative, and the autonomous stage. Um, and then there's also recovery and rehabilitation that was also very football specific. And I, and I asked the question to round off, why is maximal training not leading African football as it has been in existence at a youth level in South Africa since 1992. Multi-factor training has been in existence for so long. The global elite multi-factor training has only become, for me, it's only been exhibited around 2007, 2008, and beyond. So that is, that is my contribution. I'm going to stop the share of, of the, and then we're going to go into our, our open discussion. You can um, pose your questions or your contributions of multi-factor, your experience of multi-factor, how would you change it if you have been doing something that is not doing um, complete justice to it? How can you use um, and be innovative in using materials that you have around recycling material. I saw from um, Coach um, uh, Ernest Kwebane in, 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 in Hermanus where he's got a harness, where he's got a harness and he's got two tires tied to that harness as a resistance. Now I feel that because we won't have the resistance bands and harnesses, everybody's we, we don't have the money to, to buy those expensive equipment. So he's using two heavier tires with an adult player, and that player is pulling the two tires in a very safe, the honest that he's got. And so I'm gonna open the floor. You can unmute yourself and, 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 and make your contribution or ask any question. And anybody who's, who's, who's available to, to, to answer that question, they can, they can answer it. The floor is open now for questions. We will have around, around nine minutes for questioning or, or contributions from, from the participants. Thank you, coaches. Anybody with a contribution, you just raise your hand and I will unmute you on my side and then I will mute myself.
Coach Umar, uh, Musa has got his hand up. Yes, Coach. Hello. Coach, uh, Coach, I just wanted to find something out about the associative stage. Does this mean this is the time where he starts to uh, participate in a team work type of, of play? Or is it just uh, part of uh, a way it's just used as part of development? I just wanted to understand that part. I don't know if my question is, is clear. Let me just answer that. Okay, yeah, thank you. So in the in that associative stage, we, we, we're looking at where they have acquired the skill now, so they now are able to use it uh, in, in, in a, 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 a max setup, in a training setup, right? So now they've advanced from learning the skill and practicing it, and now they, 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 will, they will be able to execute it, right? So obviously the degree of, of, of competency will, will, will differ from the age they are at, as well as the, the ability. I hope that makes sense, Coach. Uh, Coach Omar, uh, afternoon Coach Omar and everybody. Uh, af afternoon Coach Omar and everybody and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question, Coach Omar, is, is here. How, looking at the slides that you were showing us from Man City, Bayern Munich, Liverpool, Barcelona, etc. And etc. how do we? How can we actually incorporate? How can we actually incorporate uh, the training methodology into f so that it fits our African attributes of players? Yeah. Coach, Coach Greg wants to answer Coach Umar. Coach Greg has his hand up. Coach Greg, you are muted. We can't hear you. Coach Greg, you are still muted. Yeah, what I'm saying is that I'm struggling with this. Let somebody help me out. Okay. Um, uh, Coach Pep, yes. Um, how do we yep, yep. incorporate um, our players' African identity? I think, from my personal experience, and I've and I've worked with, I have worked with lots of African players, introducing them to maximum value. It is there, there is a natural fit to what the activities that you're doing. I think it, it, that is where our culture and our identity comes out. Players can relate to it immediately. It, it is not in opposition to their identity and their love for the football. Because once they can see that everything is going to happen with the football, that opens their minds, that opens their brains completely to what's going to happen. Um, there's no opposition. They 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 just embrace the whole the whole concept 
of, of multi-factor training. They can see the, 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 the common sense in it. You're not discouraging them from um, um, expressing their, 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 their identity and expressing their, their, their ability, their God-given talent. Um, I've had very, very positive experience, Coach Pep, from introducing this the, the concept to African players and seeing how they embrace it and how um, they just express themselves in a very totally different way to the very rigid, traditional, coach-centered training. I hope it, it answers your question. Yep, yep, it does, it does. Coach Spara, you, you are next. Okay. Can you hear me, Coach? Um, can you hear me? Uh, can we I can go? all hear you, Coach Spara. Yeah, we can all hear you. Okay. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you, Coach Omar. Hello to everyone in the group. Uh, my question is um, uh, you're saying that we use, we, we're using football with everything that we do, right? So my question is with the, with the precision. How does one approach the, 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 the precision? Knowing that, because because I, I know that it, with the maximal training is about uh, fusing all four factors of performance together on one exercise. So how does one go about in terms of trying to make sure that he accommodates the the, the, the conditioning side to, to get the side ready, like in the in the preseason uh, period. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's all. Okay, thank you, Coach, for your answer for your question. Coach Greg is going to give us a, a contribution towards that. Good afternoon. Can you hear me, Omar? Yes, yes Coach, yes, we can, can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, Coach, we yes, can yes, hear you. you. can continue speaking. Yeah, as regards precision training, without the ball or with the ball. Hello? Oh. Yeah, we can hear you, Coach Greg. You can continue. Can you hear me? Ne? Oh, <laughs> oh my, I'm struggling again to continue to talk to you guys. We can hear you, Coach. If you just continue talking, we can hear you clearly. Okay. We, we, we have the uh, in terms of... And um, just to... to, 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 to answer coach spara's question about um how do we incorporate maximal training in pre-season where we, we we need to look at fitness of players right building up their, their capacity to to be able to play football matches my personal experience is that um i still include that's that's only from my personal experience i still include um, those activities, obviously, what, what we need to do is the areas that we are working with coach, coaches must be, at, 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 the distance should obviously be increased to, to, to get the conditioning in. So we, we, we're getting some running with the ball, but now we're not moving only from 20 to 30 meters. Um, the meters that we, we're looking at is more of 40 to 60 meter um, playing surf areas that we need to do our activities in. Um, we can share um, ideas of what we can do in those multi-factor training um, where we maybe move from station to station across both halves of the field to get in. I always uh, say to players, we must get in the mileage on, 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 on the legs when we do our preseason. But it, it, it's still very football specific it still has got the, 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 the challenges. It still has got the, the small-sided games. We want the small-sided games 
in bigger areas for players to, to be able to cover a greater distance in our preseason. And the closer we come to, to, to our in season and when we're starting to play matches, then the distances of our, 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 our grids become smaller. But we, we, we can always contribute in, 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 in how do we include I have maybe um, we divide the field, half of the field up into four corners. So you'll do specific multi-factor training in a particular corner. And then you can include a sprinting with the ball towards your, your second um, um, multi-factor station. After five to ten minutes of activity there, the next you, you sprint to the third corner. It's almost like a relay that you're doing. But at each corner, you address a particular activity, a multi-factor activity, right? So, and then you move, and as you're moving around, you get that fitness in because you're covering a greater distance and you, the players can feel it when it's a preseason. Um, I hope that that is, that is the method I, what that I use when, when, I, when I work with players preseason, that I divide the field up and where they can at least have between 5 to 10 sprints of 40 to 60 meters in between these multi-factor stations. They do certain activities there with the ball that's ball related and then they, they move with the ball to the next area where they will continue to do another activity. That is how I have incorporated multi-factor training, maximal training into a pre-season training. I hope it makes sense, Coach Spara. Another question from anybody? While we're waiting for Coach Greg to, to, to go live again. Uh, coach, uh, thanks, Coach Omar Ake. Uh, now, uh, it brings me into the next question. All right, when we do the multifunctional uh, factors training, and then and then you find you find that uh, you actually having uh, one one particular player that is naturally slow. That is naturally slow in terms of uh, the speed, the reaction, but, but he's good technically. He's, a, he's good technically. How do you, uh, does the multi, multifunctional exercise actually help that particular player to improve in his reaction and speed? I think um, with, 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 in, in, in trying to answer you, I think the more repetitions that player needs to do, I always... I always encourage players that needs to improve on their fitness, that they should do more repetitions of the activity, right? So if, if, if there's a need for a player to do about five repetitions, then the slower or the, the players that is not as fit as the others should be doing 10 to 15 repetitions. I always encourage those players that needs to work on their reaction, that needs to work on their explosiveness to do more repetitions than the other players that is more um, gifted athletically to, be, uh, to, 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 get, to gain match fitness within two weeks. They match fit, they can play a full match. Whereas another player, because of his of his, his just his genetic makeup he will take four to six weeks to get fit to a level where he can play a full match so i require that player to put in more time in terms of the repetitions so he needs to stay in that moment um, more and, and 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 allow another player to do less because we must remember that players are, are different in terms of their genetic makeup their dna is very different you'll get a player that's that's athletically very gifted, 
very fast, loses his, his, his body fat quickly in a preseason, whereas another player, his metabolism is very slow, he takes very long to get fit. So you, you, we have that phenomenon, so I request that, that those players do more repetitions of the exercise that we are busy with. I hope that answers your question, Coach. Any other contribution? Uh, hi coaches, um, I think I was going to be uh, uh, just uh, in addition to coach Pep uh, Guardiola there uh, with a player who's not slow this time but who has a bit of weight, who's a bit fat but he does everything well but because of his weight he, he can't do a lot of activities there but I, I'm assuming that uh, because of the reputations that you've spoken about. So it may sort of like address that question as well. Uh, yes, so I was just in support of what uh, you had said and what Pep uh, was suggesting. Thank you, Coach Musa. Okay, yeah, sure. So we have Coach Alex with us today. Coach Alex, I believe this is your first, yeah, first time thank with you. us. No, I, I have been attending the sessions, but uh, I, I haven't really contributed. Most of the time I was just listening. Um, just to add on what uh, you have said uh, about the players, I just wanted to uh, maybe advise that we, even if we want to do uh, more repetitions for the player, we, we should be aware of overtraining. Um, we should also be aware when the next game will be played, how far the game is and how much work have the player done in the in the past uh, maybe training weeks or in the past games. Um, um, I also want to make a contribution on um, uh, how do we incorporate multi-factor training during preseason. Um, I just want to say, uh, you will correct me, Coach, I just want to say that um, uh, firstly, we know that during for preseason it's where we try to get our players in shape, but it's always best if we do it with multi-factor training. Um, firstly, you, you have to understand the the objective of the training session that you are going to have. If you are going to maybe it's the first week of training where you are going to the the conditioning objective maybe it's endurance, you should also try to incorporate the ball. I think the nine v nine is is one of the activities that you can do as compared to where the players take laps around the, the field. Absolutely, Coach. Yeah, it, it, the, the, the first part of your contribution, the, that the loading and the amount of work that the player has put in, we don't want to, 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 to get the player to in a state that he's so fatigued that he won't be able to play a friendly match or a portion of the friendly match. That's why it's very important that uh, we need to look at the pl a specific player that training does not impact all players the same way. And the player needs to tell you, coach, I can, I, this, is, this is my threshold, I, I, I can only do this much. Because you can see the effort that the player is putting in. If, if, the, if the player is honest, and he's going to give you as much as he can, and, but if you can't give more, then, then you will know the honesty from your players. You will know this is how far my player can go. You can't go beyond that. So you, we need to take care. We've seen that in elite football, our players break down in training because of overtraining. We need to get them at that level where they, where, where they in peak performance. And we, we, we need to look at, at 
their, their health and longevity in, 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 the, in, the, in the game is very important. You cannot overtrain them in, to, to a stage where they, they won't be able to perform. And if they can't perform, they're not going to enjoy the training. So it's very important that each individual player needs to give his honest effort and then the player, the, the coach can see, you know, where, 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 where are my, my players at and how fit is my player and how much can my player do. Thank you, you Coach Alex, for that, that, that question and contribution. Any other other questions or contributions from the coaches? I know that just to come in again, um, in terms of the preseason, I know that it is um, the challenge is to move away from where we will go on the on the road. Um, Players will be running um, a few kilometers, 5, 10, 15 k's. Um, not all our players, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and it's one particular part of training that I simply hate, is that even in 2020, we find in our local game coaches that's taking players for pre-season running of 5, 10, 15 Ks. Those players don't have the right footwear to go on the road and run as if they are uh, half marathon and marathon runners. That type of activity is, is not conducive for football preseason. Because the more the player runs in these marathon type of training, the more the muscle memory is telling them that you need to run at that particular pace. That is not the pace that football is played at. That is not the tempo that football is played at. Football is played in a 10 to 15 meter. Very explosive power is required. Speed, um, reaction time, reaction speed, um, explosiveness, uh, ability to turn and run back, ability to jump. Those are the, the particular activities that we need to, to, to incorporate in our preseason training with multi-factor training available to us. If we continuously make a player run 10 to 15 kilometers for three weeks, we must remember that for three weeks the muscle memory is storing that information of that pace that I must run to be able to complete a 10 to 15 kilometer run used as preseason training. That is, that, that is totally unrelated to what the game is going to require from our players. Our players don't run marathons in a, in a match at short burst of speed between 10 to 15 meters. Um, explosiveness, jumping ability, all of those things. We need to practice those things in our, in our preseason. I hope that that explains uh, the, the, the nature of our preseason. <laughs> Coach Omar, uh, Coach Omar. <laughs> I'm still laughing when you say uh, when you say our players don't run marathon in during games. Eh? <laughs> uh, Coach Omar, having said all that we've said today, I actually think it it, it in fact brought me into a conclusion that uh, somewhere somehow we actually as a South African coach, in fact African coaches as a whole, somewhere somehow we lack. Uh, we lack relevant information. Some at times we do things, but not uh, truly looking into the whys. We have to do things. When you say, when you say, uh, everything must be done with the ball from the warm up till the conclusion of the session. I, I actually want to concur with you. If we go on and look at uh, baseball training sessions, 
you actually realize that uh, the baseball players they do everything with the ball they, they don't do any exercise without the ball and when you go and watch them play you can actually see the rhythm and the the rhythm that they have as a team and the way they able to handle the ball the technique then it tells you that uh, as football coaches I would I would say some of us yes we do the wrong things but it's purely because we don't have the relevant knowledge so having people like you uh closer to us will actually enlighten us to be more of better coaches than we are currently yeah that's all that i wanted to say coach Omar. thank you thank you coach pep it's very important that we that we learn from 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 other sports you'll see how how, how basketball um volleyball when those people start warming up the ball is always at the beginning the ball is the center of of any activity um you, we find that sometimes we, we inherit players from particular clubs and coaches and the first thing that the player does instinctively they go and they take three laps so you don't want to fight with the player and my this alternative advice to, to, to coaches is give him the ball to run those laps. He'll only do one lap. He won't do more than one lap. Because that lap with the ball is going to tire him out. Right? But he wants to be fresh for the training. Tell him, if you're going to do a lap, take a lap with the ball. Get as many touches in with that lap around the soccer field. That, that soccer field is going to be around 350 to, to 400 meters, right? So, so give him the ball. Yep, yep. He insists on running a lap. Then at least by the time he starts warm up, he already has an X amount of touches with the ball. Whether it's a touch that is kicking the ball and sprinting towards the ball. But everything that he's doing in that lap would be in relation to the ball. So he's not going to kick that ball too far because then he must go and find the ball again. So he's going to keep that ball. I always say a player who's got the ball, the length of a ruler, 30 centimeters. If a player has the ball 30 centimeters away from his feet, he's in control of the ball. Anything beyond 30 meters, you're giving your opponent the opportunity to rob you of the ball. So a good player has control of the ball in the distance of 30 centimeters. The rule is there. And if you tell a young player that, they know, they, they go to school, they have their rulers. So they know that's the distance of a ruler, that's their point of reference. And if they're kicking the ball, that ball shouldn't go beyond 30 centimeters. That, 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 that's something that I use in my coaching. Once the ball is beyond 30 centimeters, the ball belongs to your opponent. If it's 30 centimeters as close to you, it belongs to you. You have enough time, the space is shorter to defend, so you will be in control of the ball. Thank you. Any other questions, coaches? I think um a lot of the coaches didn't come back we had a, a, a good couple of coaches we are we only currently eight so i think um, we're going to round uh, up now if there's any other final comments that uh, coaches want to make uh, coach Musa. Um, I, was, I was speaking just to conclude i was speaking to to coach this um about today's session and i understand um, not no disrespect to any of the coaches, no fault of coaches as well, but the language of maximal training can be a very scientific and a very difficult language to understand. There's no disrespect to coaches. That is just the nature of it's written in, in English in a particular language that that speaks to the football science fraternity. It is very difficult to understand, and we need to make it easy and put it in layman's terms of how to incorporate and how to apply maximum training. So that we then, in that layman's term, 
when it can translate it into indigenous languages. Because I think that is very important for, for us in South Africa and Africa is that maximal training in layman's terms needs to be translated into indigenous languages so that players can understand it in their mother tongue. Coaches can, can, can give it over to players in their mother tongue. I, I use English, it's not my mother tongue, I'm, I'm, I was raised Afrikaans, but I give it over in English. I would love for coaches to teach me at least two indigenous languages. I, I, that, that would be an achievement for me where I can speak at least Isikosa or Isizulu before I close my eyes in this world and be able to conduct a coaching session in one of those two indigenous languages. That would be my greatest achievement in terms of as a maximal training student of, of, of Coach uh, Prof and as a lifelong learner of the beautiful game. If I can conduct a session in an indigenous language, that would be my greatest achievement. And I need you guys to help me as I'm helping you with, 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 with football, you need to help me with the languages. I think on that note, we're going to conclude our session for today. Thank you very much and stay safe, people. We're going into winter. It is very cold in Cape Town. Stay safe and protect yourselves until we have our next session. I think um, Coach Sudez is trying to get Keegan Dolly and Sianda Kolo to, to, to address us on their experience of, of maximal training and how it has propelled them into their prof professional football careers. So I'm excited to hear about those, those prospects of give, getting them to address us in the very near future. But thank you for your contribution. I hope I have done justice to maximal training and to the legacy of Professor Te Dumito. Bye-bye and stay safe, guys. Thank you, Coach Omar. Thank you very much. Thank you.